Over the past few weeks, I made two videos regarding managed payments and I decided to make a third video uh, because I have received some comments, some questions, and I just wanted to kind of discuss with you uh, a plan of action moving forward. So without any further ado, let's go. So as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, I've had some concerns and some questions asked about the Managed Payments program and I thought it was a good idea to make what I'd like to think of as my third and final video on the subject. Um, really only making this video because I think it's that important to do, but uh, based on the questions I've received over the last uh, two to three weeks, I thought it would be a good uh, subject material to, uh, to talk to you about. I've received about a dozen questions or statements on this particular issue and I thought it was important to share this uh, again but to maybe answer these questions so that the whole purpose is so that we can all be informed as sellers when we finally make that decision. We only have about a month left before managed payments are forced upon us and so I want you to be informed before you make that decision don't don't make a rash decision make a well thought out decision you have a month to do that okay so uh, so let's talk about it uh, Wendy sent me a question on YouTube and uh, she asked does this mean we will no longer be able to have our sales run through eBay slash PayPal currently I have eBay and PayPal connected and PayPal deducts the funds directly out of my bank account will this need to change so with the implementation of managed payments that means um, come the 15th of July when this is implemented we will no longer be able to take PayPal payments for any eBay transaction the payments will then go through managed payments so what will happen is your buyer will be able to use PayPal to pay for your item they'll be able to use their debit card they'll be able to use their credit cards uh, if they desire to pay for your item okay and that money will then be sent to eBay and eBay holds this money and uh, they process the money and it does take some time for that money to get to your bank eBay will need to have your bank account information on file so you will need to set that up you do need to set that up prior to the 15th if you don't have it set up prior to the 15th it may prohibit you from selling your items on their platform and so you definitely want to get ahead of this a week prior you want to have your changes into eBay with your account number your bank account number so that uh, if there's any issues you can get right back into selling and not have any uh, hiccups that's preventing you from selling on this platform get a job center question can slash will eBay manage payments freeze my bank account until a case or whatever issue return is resolved. If eBay can freeze my bank account, do they notify me? So that's a good question, but eBay has no way of freezing anything in your bank account. Uh, what happens again when a customer pays for your item, that money gets sent to a, a pool. Your money is being held, okay? It's in a pending state. And so the money in that pending state is in processing and uh, it does take about two to three business days for that money to actually get sent over to your bank account. Um, while you have pending funds waiting to be processed, if you have a return request, um, let's say a customer buys an item from you for a hundred bucks, you have five hundred dollars in your pending state waiting to be processed, that hundred dollar item as soon as they file the return request that money is that hundred dollars is frozen out of your five hundred so it's actually now not going to be processed so only you only have four hundred dollars left that's waiting to be processed bank back to your account and so that money is held until that return request is finalized 
So you can go in and approve the return and not until that return is handled to where you give them a refund will that money be released either to the customer with the refund uh, or let's say you use your top rated seller privileges deduct an amount from that refund whatever you decide to do but once that's finalized that'll actually then be released to the customer and the balance will then be released back to you and back to your bank account if that makes sense Mike Dennis uh, had a comment on the matter thank you for the for this lots of information in, and info here I've learned that eBay has lost a top eBay director overseeing the API development and other two high-level directors have also resigned. In the last AGM, it was announced that eBay would be generating more income not from innovation or increasing sales, but from its sellers. That alone says where eBay is going and your video has just confirmed this. Like everyone else that I know, I'm now transitioning to Amazon and other platforms for an easier, less stressful selling experience. Why anyone would continue being treated like this is beyond me. Good video anyway, and thank you. Well, um, that's a good question. Why would anyone continue selling on this platform? And in my case, and I can explain where I'm coming from, and that is eBay still is a superior platform to say Mercari. Um, Amazon has its own set of issues. Um, for instance, m many of the major brands that you would sell on Amazon are gated. So that same pair of Nike shoes that you'd be able to sell on, on eBay, you're not going to be able to sell on Amazon because it's gated. Unless you have an older account that's grandfathered in and you know most people who would be making that transition from eBay to Amazon uh, will not have that type of account. So a lot of those top items you're not going to be able to sell and you're going to have to find another place to sell them. eBay remains that platform where you can sell those gated items say on, on Amazon. As far as Mercari, it, it, it still feels like a very cheap version of eBay and um, you're definitely, at least from my experience, not going to get the same kind of prices that you're getting on eBay. Um, for those of you who sell clothing, definitely you should already be on Poshmark and in my experience, Poshmark is the superior platform to eBay for selling your, your wares and your clothing, uh, your accessories and things like that. So you should already, regardless if you're going to stay with eBay, be looking into to opening up a Poshmark account. But a key point that Mike does bring up, the earnings that eBay made last year the increased earnings were not really because of any kind of innovation or increased sales. It was the increased fees that they took from us sellers. And th those additional fees, we haven't seen any innovation to help us out. You talk about these innovations and some of these things we're going to get to here in a minute. Um, it makes you just wonder, do they have the seller's best interest in mind or is eBay just simply using us as a way to increase their bottom line? I think it's the latter. Susan Arrington wrote, couldn't you just take a cancellation fee from the customer? So her question was in regards to cancellations. So I'm sure most of you have dealt with customers who after buying your item will immediately ask for a cancellation. And um, currently, if you are in managed payments, you can actually give that customer a refund and it doesn't cost you a penny. You have no, no money lost at all as a seller. You can't say the same thing on PayPal. PayPal, if you're taking PayPal payments and have a cancellation request, you're going to lose 3% of that sale because of their processing fee. Well, as of July 15th, when this is all implemented, you as a seller, if you have a cancellation request and you accept that cancellation, the customer will get their full refund and you will lose 2.1% of that sale just because you canceled. And if it's a $100 item, you're losing $2.10. And for something you didn't do wrong because the customer canceled for who knows why, uh, in most cases the customer will cancel because eBay showed them 
your competitor's item that might be a few dollars cheaper. Got another comment here from Joe at the Crazy New York Driver Show. I am sick of cancellations and in my humble opinion 99% of them are due to the fact that eBay is showing buyers our competitors items after they purchased from us. That my friends is dirty pool and I agree. Uh, the practice of showing competitors a similar or the same item right after they buy your item doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. I can understand if eBay decided to show your your buyer maybe some accessories for the item you just purchased uh, or something that goes with the item you just purchased. But to me, if you're showing a similar item to what I just sold my customer, okay, um, you're hurting me as a seller. Why would you want to hurt your sellers? Now, this goes into what Mike just said eBay is coming up with things they can do to further tax the sellers without giving us anything back for it. What they've done is they've watched how PayPal has taken 3% from their sellers when it comes to refunds and when it comes to uh, the cancellations. And I think they decided that they wanted a piece of that pie and that's another thing that they can add to their bottom line and this is another tactic that they can do to get customers to, to buy your item and then cancel that item as soon as they show them a similar item at a lower price and honestly that tactic needs to stop and that's one of the reasons why I made this this video because as sellers we need to collectively send eBay our feedback okay and uh, there's forums on the eBay website. We all need to consider leaving our feedback that we do not appreciate eBay doing this to us and our customers. If you think about it from a customer standpoint, I buy an item from a seller for $100 and after I pay that seller, I see it for 75 As a customer, it causes confusion and now I have to go in and request a cancellation and hope that seller gets back to me so I can get my money back so I can buy this cheaper item. And it just causes a lot of confusion. It's not a good customer buying experience. And from that standpoint, if eBay doesn't care about the sellers, they should at least care that it's creating confusion for the buyer and a bad buying experience. This whole thing of showing the same item to a customer who just bought this very item is bad business. And we all need to let eBay know that it's hurting not only us, but it's gonna hurt them in the long run. Uh, Mariska Kramer sent uh, a message. Hi, thanks for the content. Are buyers required immediate payment with best offer auctions with managed payment? Also. Is there still a discount offered through eBay shipping and managed payment? Thanks again for your time. No, uh, that's another innovation that we've been waiting for. eBay, I have no idea why, refuses to mandate that the buyer pay for your item immediately when you send them a best offer, okay? And I just don't know why it's not a very difficult programming fix and feature. It's not like uh, the cost is going to outweigh the benefit here. This is something that the sellers have been asking for now for over a year. And why I am offering an item at a discounted rate, they're not required to pay for it, but the, the buyer that's willing to pay full price has to pay for it right away. It just does not make any sense. And again, this is hurting your sellers you need to fix this and if you're going to continue to nickel and dime your sellers at least like uh, Mike said give us something for the money that we continually give you because right now I don't see any benefit to you continually taking uh, the amount of fees that you take every month from me and I'm sure you as other sellers feel the same way. Uh, the other question uh, are, is there a discount offered through eBay shipping with managed payments? Well, eBay has really never offered any, any kind of shipping discounts for managed payments, at least from what I understand. 
Um, but eBay has waived that 2.1% processing fee for uh, sellers who have used managed payments during the initial you know, nine month period, okay? But as of mid-July, uh, that 2.1% that we're not paying right now, for those of you who are on managed payments, are going to have to start paying that, which is the equivalent of that 3% PayPal um, processing fee. So um, yeah, that's going to be done away with and all eBay sellers will be on managed payments paying the 2.1% processing fee in addition to our final value fees. And our last question slash comment for the day is from Denver Flipper. I think it'll just be the cost of doing business, just like being in a brick and mortar business when utilities, rent, insurance, etc. goes up. And as a seller, figure out the cost of the unknown and unplanned for surprises. And as you said, get out of it if you can't deal with your profit and business plan. The seller raises every one of their prices by say five cents uh, over a year's time, they'll probably have more in that invisible fund than they pay out, question mark. So, you know, in any business, when that business has to incur extra fees, that gets passed on to the customer, okay? And I can see that happening here. The good news and the takeaway that I have is from the last few months with this pandemic, more and more people have bought items on eBay and Amazon. I'm sure your sales have gone up just as mine and, and others have reported, okay? And I don't think that is uh, just a fad. I think it's going to be something that's gonna continue. You're gonna see more people buying uh, items on this platform, and that's, that's only great for us. So if we have to increase our prices for items to cover these costs, then we're gonna have to. But it's still gonna be competition. So you're still gonna have your competitors selling that item. That's why you know, I mentioned in my other videos that sourcing is so important because you know, that's where you make your money in this business. And if I'm into an item for half of what you are, I'm gonna be able to be more competitive. So it's just another thing to consider. But uh, you know, it's the cost of doing business. Um, like some of you have already written to me that you're not willing to take on these extra costs and I understand that um, you're gonna find other ways of selling your item and if, if you you know based on your business model can do that uh, then then good for you myself I'm just not gonna be able to I'm gonna have to uh, until I find a better platform for the type of items that I sell I'm gonna be sticking with eBay and trying to make it work so that leads me to my last question to you what are you going to do over the next month to get ready for this change and it is a, it is a change and if you're not ready for it it's going to leave you in an uncomfortable position also you want to figure out are you going to accept these cancellations if a customer comes to you and wants to cancel um, what are you going to do leave your comments below what do you plan on doing as a seller when it comes to cancellations i can tell you what i'm doing uh, after this change mid-July I'm no longer taking cancellations but because I offer free returns is that going to open the door for that customer to now uh, want to return that item uh, because for whatever reason they wanted the lower price that eBay is offering them and um, now I'm out for the return shipping so these are all things that we have to figure out right now as sellers because you do not want to wait until these changes are made by eBay and now you're scrambling to figure out what you're going to do. So take this month and figure out what you plan on doing with your business on eBay and take this time to voice your concern uh, on, on many of the forums that are online um, through eBay and voice your opinion because if enough sellers display their concern about eBay gouging us for this um, processing fee of 2.1 percent uh, my hope is that they would be receptive and possibly scrap that idea so uh, I think I've left you with enough information to think about uh, please give me some likes on uh, smash that like button and uh, consider subscribing to my channel we're trying to give you some content as a seller to help you improve your business 
And so until next time, have a great rest of your day. <laughs>